today I'm speaking with McLeod Williamson, RFID Business Development Manager at Zebra Technologies. Welcome, McLeod. Thanks, good to be here. I think when you talked with us last year, we concentrated on applications and procedures for RFID asset tracking. That's right. Let's talk a little bit today about return on investment. How do companies using this, these systems get an ROI? Sure, and, and that's always the question, right? And uh, really, it, it, it's about the visibility that you gain from using any technology, RFID specifically. Um, if I can see the product, I can make better decisions. I, I know where maybe it slows down in my supply chain, or maybe where it gets lost or, or gets to where it shouldn't be. And I can, I can change my processes to allow uh, for better efficiency, better accuracy, and uh, get the right product to the right place at the right time. In terms of ROI, can you compare for me um, RFID versus other systems like barcoding? Sure, there's some fundamental differences um, between RFID and something like a barcode. Barcodes are, are obviously line of sight. I've got to scan a barcode to, to get that identification information. Whereas RFID uses radio waves and, and isn't requiring line of sight. Um, there's also a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship with, uh, with barcodes. I'm scanning one thing at a time. And with RFID, I can scan multiple things at a time. So not only do I not need that line of sight, I can also scan multiple things at a time. And all of these things are very unique. RFID requires unique serialized products. So I can count things very quickly, and very accurately, uh, with, with really very little labor. Uh, whereas doing the same thing with barcodes would require a lot more labor and a lot more, therefore, cost. But of course, RFID has a lot more upfront costs, right? It can, it can. But if you look at uh, those that are using RFID in, in different verticals these days, they're using them on very low cost products. So uh, regardless of the, the cost of the system, they are seeing that return, uh, you know, even when you're tracking things like socks or t-shirts. Relate that for me to a company's bottom line. Where, where does this result in real dollar savings? Sure, on the bottom line, you're mostly talking about reducing labor, right? Um, and if you think about uh, inventory uh, accuracies in the 60s for a lot of retailers, um, if you can take inventory more often and get up into the high 90s, uh, you're going you're gonna to end up with a, a lot better practices. But with RFID, I can take that inventory or a cycle count just probably in, in a few minutes with one person, whereas with, with barcodes, it would take uh, several people several hours. So that's really showing you the, the labor reduction that you can see with RFID. Um, and then, then a lot of times when, when a technology works as it should, uh, what you get is uh, your associates and, and your operators just go about their job. You know, they, if they're receiving or picking or packing or, or, or even working in sales, they don't have to interact with technology. RFID has a great uh, ability to be automated, so the system and the technology just kind of goes about its business while the, uh, the employees of the company go about theirs, and uh, that allows them to be more efficient too. What about the top line numbers? Uh, you know, if I've got better inventory accuracy, then I, I'm not going to have out of stocks. I'm going to have the, the, the product available to be sold. Uh, so retailers are seeing anywhere from 2 to 20 percent uplift in their sales because, again, the right product's in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, even if I'm a, a manufacturer, I, I'm, I'm eventually going to sell my product. And so if I'm uh, efficient and I get uh, that product to the end point of my supply chain to be sold, I'm going to see an increase in those sales. The most visible use that we see of RFID today is in retail in areas like um, higher cost apparel and so forth. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some more examples of, of companies that are making good use of this technology? Sure, and, and retail certainly has a, a, a lot of the a momentum in the marketplace and, and a lot of the press in the marketplace as well, but we're seeing uh, other verticals have it as well. You know, aerospace is one that's really taking off, no pun intended these days. Uh, they're tracking airplane parts and, and uh, parts that you really can't get to. Imagine uh, the life vest under a seat in a plane or the oxygen mask that's up in the, uh, the unit above your head. Those things need to be inventoried and you need to know when they were last uh, maintained. Uh, and with RFID, you can do that much more quickly. So that's something that's really taken off in aerospace. Uh, you see asset tracking in uh, data centers. You know, you got blade servers that they all look alike, and sometimes they move around. Um, so RFID allows you to watch there. And we're really expecting healthcare to take off as well. If you think about a hospital, 
the, you know, thousands and thousands of assets, some of them very, very high dollar assets, but also controlled substances, also uh, specimens you've taken from patients or the patients themselves. There really are a lot of opportunities in healthcare that we expect to, to, uh, to grow in the next few years. So are you now really beginning to see companies start to invest? I know with the recession, it's taken a long time for them to really get back into investment mode. Mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing that, you know, uh, people are still piloting. You know, you, you really do need to, because you're, you're very careful with spending your money, you need to, to vet out anything. So the pilots still happen, but we are seeing pilots turn into rollouts. Um, you know, as companies try to do more with less and be lean, that visibility that RFID gives you is even more important. Uh, Omnichannel is something that a lot of people are talking about today. And really what you're doing there is you're using the back of the store or maybe even the front of the store as another uh, inventory location. And uh, that requires an awful lot of visibility into the stores as well as into the DCs. So it, it allows companies to, to do more with less, which is really the mantra for many of them these days. Can you give me a sort of typical picture of what it would look like for a company to get started on this path? Sure, and, and a lot of times people immediately think of you know, boiling the ocean. You know, I want to tag everything and see where everything is at all times. But, but really, a, a better way to get started is to pick a, a place where uh, you know you have a problem with visibility. You know that you have inaccuracies. You know that you don't have the velocity through your supply chain that you like to have. Uh, and let's start there. Let's, let's tag items so we can, we can see how the technology helps in, in those situations and then kind of take steps to move forward from there. Can you talk to me a little bit about the difference between active and passive tags and where one um, is better to use and w which situations um, apply? Absolutely. So the, the fundamental difference is passive tags have no power on board and active tags have power and they're more like a beacon. Um, but also with active tags, you get uh, the, the location you get is more of a, like an XY coordinate. So you can see a, a blip on a, on a grid. Um, and really for that, it's, it's for assets. You know, need to know exactly where they are right now. The, the real time locating systems is, is why we call them that. Passive is more, you know, I've, I saw it when it made the most recent significant transition. It went from the truck into receiving. It went from the back of the store to the sales floor. And from that, you can infer where it is, and that's a good enough level of accuracy. So when comparing the technologies, you really want to look at what's the granularity I need of the visibility, um, and that'll point you in the direction of which technology is going to work for you. I believe there being some applications now, and maybe I'm, this probably isn't new, but in terms of um, returnable containers, mm -hmm. Yep, you know, it, that's another example of asset tracking and, and uh, returnable containers or anything that leaves one company's possession and they have to trust that they're going to come back is a, is, is a challenge. And so what RFID allows uh, those companies to do is, is, again, see that visibility, but also know who's possessing that, you know, who, who took which pallets from me or which containers from me. And therefore, you can share that data with those customers and those trading partners and uh, not only are they a little more conscientious, conscientious um, but also they know that, that it really it's, it's a value to you. We saw some examples in, in some stores where just uh, tagging the product, um, employees uh, reduced the shrink. So when, when you know you're tagging something, you know there's a value, you pay a little more attention to it as well. Absolutely. You know, we see so many companies becoming mobile with their workforce in, in every possible way. Can you talk to me a little about how this mobility is playing into the whole area of, of automated data capture? Everyone talks about bringing your own device. Uh, there, there are an awful lot of, of smart devices out there. And so uh, the, the amount of com computing that's gone, excuse me, the amount of computing that's done on an individual basis is, is really skyrocketing. Uh, and so, you know, again, that's, that's going to point to things like that omni-channel, right? So if, if I need to serve the customer in many different ways than I used to, um, I've got to be agile. And, and visibility leads to that agility that I'm, that I'm looking for. All right. Great information. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I've been speaking with McLeod Williamson of Zebra Technologies. Thank you for watching.